So today I really need to install the roofing underlayment to protect the cabin from the rain, but I ended up discovering a family of mouse with their babies living on the roof under the top. I mean, now they're kind of unprotected from the elements and I'm really not sure what to do about it. All right, so the next step, I need to finish enclosing this, which means that, you know, I need a vertical here and then I'll need something here to bridge the gap so that I have constantly stuff to nail to. And then I'll add a triangular piece here to close this. So I don't know really where to stall, to be honest. So here's the, oh, that's comfortable. Look at that little chair, love it. So we'll also have to get something to go up here. So there you go, this is gonna go like that. I don't know, you're gonna, we're gonna nail this. I have no clue. Hey, my eyes are up here, okay? Yeah, I know, I have a big hole in my pants. This is embarrassing, especially that I didn't realize it till the end of the weekend when my wife pointed it out. Okay, let me just try something. Mm, much better. Uh, yeah, I really don't know. I'm probably gonna have to put a piece of wood to like splice those. And then this guy is gonna go like that. And then I'm just gonna splice it with this, just like that. Okay, so I got my right angle thing and I'm gonna see if I can put, boom. Okay, we're good to go. I don't think we need this little piece sticking out here, so. Okay, here's the beautiful triangle. Oh la la, I like it. That's how you kind of box the end so that when I put my, my trim pieces, I have everything I need to uh, have something to nail to. Okay, so we got kind of a situation here, I was removing the top because I'm gonna work on the roof tomorrow. And I uncovered wherever they went, but oh, where did she go? All right, so here's the situation. What is this? Oh, you're nice and fat. So a few weeks ago, I had found this chunky mouse running around the cabin and adding to the roof. So I think it's fair to assume that this was actually a pregnant mouse who was building a nest on the roof. And so now I just had to uncover where she was staying with those babies. She can't go back down the roof. Come here. Oh goodness, I don't want her to just fall because there's nothing really to go down now. So she just keeps hiding under the top, but that's not really solving it, the situation. And so she's just trying to move all those babies here. Yeah, she's just realizing that there's nowhere for her to go unless she finds a way. That's all I want. No, you're gonna fall. Don't go down here. Oh, maybe she found a way. And sure enough, she did find a way through the roof down into the cabin. So my only hope was that she would move her family down there as well. Okay, it looks like it's working. It looks like she's taking them somewhere else. I think it's inside the cabin.
So at that point, I was going to move on to my next task and I will come back later to check that they did move away from the roof. <clears throat> you can see here I have my 1x8, that's gonna be my fascia boards and I've already started to stain them, but I still need to do a final layer on this outer edge. And keep in mind that you actually are supposed to stain all sides because this is white pine, so it needs to be protected or it could easily rot. There we go. So that will help hold it since I'm by myself. So I had to get a new tool, which I was trying to avoid, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, for installing siding, which I'm about to do with the fascia bolt, I really wanted to just use my framing nailer, but after some research, it was highly not recommended. You can see that the tip is actually really pointy, but every time you do that, you're damaging the wood. So let me drive a few nails and we'll do a comparison. So here is what I have to get, which is called a siding nailer. It's shooting smaller nails. And also it has a much larger capacity. And also you can see that this time you have a nicely protected round head. When depressed, it's not gonna damage the wood whatsoever. Oh yeah, that looks so much better. So that is the framing nails, uh, two and a half inch nails versus here, the nice siding nailer, which really, I mean, smaller nails, so hopefully easier to cover, and I think a much more consistent finish as well. I mean, there's no doubt, if you're building a cabin or you're doing a big siding job, it's totally worse to get that gun. I will actually put a link in the description of this specific gun. All right, this is getting serious because installing finished materials, you can't mess it up. Otherwise, it's gonna look like trash. Go away. Go away, ladder. No! So here on this side, I want to just leave three quarter of an inch to stick out so that when this bolt comes here, oh la la, man, this is gonna look awesome. It's in! First piece of trim. This is very exciting because, you know, the cabin is showing his, uh, his colors now. So, I don't know how often you're supposed to nail this in, to be honest. I think you can do it at 16, I guess. I mean, honestly, it's gonna be covered with gutters eventually. So the next step is we're actually kind of like starting to install pieces of the roofing. And so it's kind of like a Lego, you know, I needed to have the fascia before I can install this, which is the drip edge. And then I can roll my underlayment on top of that. So you kind of have to do it in the proper order. That's going to be the color of the roof, drum roll. Doo -doo -doo. So it's going to be green. Uh, I don't know, you know, kind of like trying to stay in the forest style and just have like a nice green roof. The drip edge actually has to follow the slope of your roof. So if you buy a drip edge from Lowe's, it's probably already pre-bent to whatever angle. If you buy it from like your local building supplier or if you like order it from like a, a roofing metal manufacturer, they will be able to bend that angle here to match my 612 slope. So then it will just fit really snug and be much easier. Otherwise you might have to like rebend it yourself. I don't think it's worth the hassle. So let's try to install this thing. Bam! Ha. This is so exciting. And then for sure, don't nail it here because if you install gutters, the gutters will go behind it.
All right, I just wanted to like do a final check to see if that mouse and babies were gone because tomorrow we're doing roof work. So let's check it out. I mean, there's not really much of any top left against the cabin. And so far, it doesn't like, look like they're anywhere close to that roof, which is great news. Okay, I don't see any mouse babies. Nope, I think she's gone. So that's awesome. I mean, they're probably in the cabin somewhere. Uh, first step, clean up everything on this roof, really. <laughs> We're gonna start with this one, which literally weighs a thousand pounds. Look at this. Um, so this is a pill and stick membrane. And the reason for using that is that um, here we get snow and ice and you can get what's called ice dams. And that pretty much means that you would get a piece of ice uh, while the water, I mean, I guess the snow behind it would melt and eventually pull water behind that ice. And so then the water could potentially enter your roof system. But this thing is really heavy and I just don't know, I'm gonna unfold it really. Yeah, 54 pounds. This thing is 54 pounds. Oh my goodness. How did this guy install these? All right. Uh, we don't need this. I don't know, man. I don't know. Okay, we'll get that later. And I'm sliding too. Oh no. And yeah, that's my microphone. Just uh, fell off the roof. One, two, one, two. Okay. All right, wish me luck. <laughs> um, this is gonna be good fun. Cause I'm sliding, this thing is taking me down. Alright, come here! All right. Well, pill and stick, not so much uh, sticking. Oh, I know it stick to itself. Oh yeah, well, that does stick really well. Oh. <laughs> that I'm just a massive mess here. I completely blew it. I completely blew it. <sighs> Alright, we're just trashing it. Done. Start over. <sighs> I don't know what to do. Right. I think I managed to salvage it, which is nice because that's expensive. So. All right, that is one layer. Oh, this is difficult.
So you can see here that I did use a different kind of underlayment for the upper part of the roof. This is also from the same brand Titanium, but this one is called the UDL 30 and it's just literally a kind of almost like a top type material uh, because we don't need the same amount of protection like we did at the bottom where possible ice dams could occur. So I'm finally done installing the roofing underlayment. It was definitely very brutal work. It took me two days nonstop to do it. I think that's definitely the kind of thing that getting a friend or a family member to help you would be very valuable. But I just proved you that even if you're by yourself, you can technically get it done. I mean, now it's pretty much good to go. It's gonna be protected from the elements. What a good feeling to not have to worry about rain after all these months, you know, pushing water off my cabin floor with a broom. Those days are over and it's a great feeling. So next time I will be putting the heavy timber front punch together. That's when I realized that I got carried away when picking up the size of the timber and that this was way too heavy for me to install. So click here on this side to see that episode. And as usual, if you're new, you can click on this other side to see the whole cabin series playlist and start from scratch. So I'll see you next time for some more cabin building.